Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Jonah. The book of Jonah, chapter 1. I will read only verse 1 to 3. Jonah, Jonah is a minor prophet in the Bible. Yeah, we have it on the screen. The book of Jonah, from chapter 1, from verse 1 to 3. I'll start reading. Now, the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fear thereof, and went down into it, to go with them unto Tarshish, from the presence of the Lord. May the Lord add blessings to the reading of his holy word. You can please be seated. I welcome you all in the pres- in, to the presence of the Lord in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ministers of God, may God bless you. Feel free in the presence of the Lord. Because right in God's presence, there is fullness of joy. And what He asks for you, don't let the enemy deny you of it. And like I've always said, we need your undivided attention. And if you feel sleepy, there is always a remedy. It's constant. Get up, walk around, and shame the devil. Amen. This morning we are looking at the sermon already preached by the prophet, titled, A Man Running from the Presence of the Lord. A Man Running from the Presence of the Lord. Amen. From the Bible we read, I believe we all know the story. You know the story of Jonah? And all that pertains to it. But our concern today is not really Jonah. Our concern is us. Because we have reached an age where we have to leave God out of history. Amen. God must be real to us as it was when the words were first spoken. Because the word of God can never fade away. It must do that which it was sent. Amen. So many of us, we used to call Jonah a sleeper. And we say, some people believe he's a backslider. But you see, everything is in the will of God. Like I said last week, that sometimes, all the time, when devil is making a mistake, God doesn't interrupt him. It's a quotation from, I keep forgetting his first name, Bonaparte. Napoleon Bonaparte. So, he's the one that quoted that. He said, when you, do not interrupt your enemy when he's making a mistake. So, if Jonah did not do what he did, Jesus will not refer to him that no sign will be given to you but the sign of prophet Jonah. Because God has a purpose. So even when the devil tries to do something, God will still use it for his own purpose. Even in your life, when the devil tries to take you the long road, there is God's purpose in it. Praise the Lord. That's why I said we should not sorrow like the world that have no hope. Even when you face trials and temptation, they are not to make you bitter, but to make you better. That's the purpose in it. Because if you don't squeeze that lily, you won't get the perfume. And God wants to get the perfume out of you. The sweet smelling savour. Amen. So, we see that God sent Jonah to who? To an Eden country. So, some people say, oh, God is God of Jews alone. No, he's the God of all flesh. So, Nineveh is not a Jewish nation. 
But God was mindful of them. God has something to do with them. Just like he does today. He has a plan and he has a program for everybody under the sun. God created every human being and everything. I don't believe in the evolution theory. Because it's contrary to Genesis chapter 1 verse 11. In which God said, let every seed bring forth its kind. And we know that's what the devil is always after. That's why I say there's evolution. Or oh, this one is evolving and becoming this. Why do we say have these lower forms of life if there is evolution? They should have all evolved and become higher forms. So why do we say have the microorganism if they are all evolving? Why is amphibians are still there when we already have mammals? They don't know what they are talking about. Hallelujah. The God is correct. He said every seed. And that's why to prove to you that God is correct, there is no way they can mix any of those animals and they get a result. When they mix them, they cannot reproduce themselves again. That's, it. that's an evidence to them that there is nothing like evolution. But they don't want to believe. Everything has pointed to the fact that Every seed we always bring forth is kind. Amen. But they don't want to believe. Because an unbeliever will not believe. But we have been enlightened. And we thank God for that. Yeah, there is a quotation here. Paragraph 44. In that same side. Say, now, first, you want to think of this. Jonah, the reason, the principal reason that I believe that he did this great thing here was because Jonah was a Jew and he was asked to go to a Gentile city to cry out against it thinking that it will not be received because the Gentile would think what is this Jew got to do with us but you see another thing it gives us a great thing here to see that God is not only the God of the Jews but is God also of the Gentiles is God of all people. He chose the Jews. The Jews were called God's chosen people. They were chosen for a specific cause. And that cause was to give them the law. And they could not keep it. It just showed by that people that the law could not be kept. And that it was God of righteousness. And the law demanded righteousness. But there was no grace in the law to bring a man out. No penalty was paid by the law. But it's taking grace to pay that penalty. Amen. So, God just used, we said, Bible was written for our example. That's why, so that we, to whom the end of the world have come, we can see and learn. So, God is God of all flesh. God of everybody. That's why it said in the book of Isaiah, he said, look unto me, all ye land, and be ye saved. Amen. Whether they are Gulf, whether they are Arab, whatever they are called, yellow, gray, brown, they have to look unto God for them to be saved. And there is no other God but the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, we, look, we saw Jonah, that when God sent him an errand, what did he do? He took a boat or a ship to Tarshish. Many of us will do that. We are going to get to that. What is taking a ship to Tashish? Running away from responsibility. We are, human beings, we are prone to doing that. So Jonah, he felt that me, a Jew, if I go and preach to those people, they may not believe me. They may stone me to death. They may, he didn't consider the person sending me on errand. He just looked at the circumstance and he believed the circumstance. How do we do many times like that? When the word of God says so and so, we look at the conditions. Ah, this thing doesn't work. Oh. It's not looking like it. We have to look at the word of God. Amen. Amen. Not your condition. Not your circumstance. I don't care whether the doctor says, oh, this is a terminal disease. The Lord has not said so. Amen. Amen. In this age, God told us that not even cancer will stand before your prayers. That's the word. And that's what we believe. Amen. So, 
regardless of your circumstance, they may say, oh, people who are HND cannot do this. It doesn't matter. You believe the word of God. They have said it before, and God has shamed them. So stop looking at your condition. Look at the word of God. Don't be like Jonah, who look at the condition and think that, ah, these are Gentiles. Oh, they will not hear the word of God. Oh, they will not do this. And he ran away. But God, once he has decided, you cannot change him. And I'm happy to say that God has decided that he's going to have a perfect bride. And there's nothing the devil can do about it. And we are part of the bride of Christ. Amen. So Jonah, what did he do? He went into a, to Joppa and he paid the fare for the ship going to Tarshish. Then if you look at the story, and then God was ready for him too. Amen. When God has decided that you are going to do something, your best bet, do you know it? Start doing it quickly. Because whether you like it or not, you will do it. But you may do it with a broken limb. If you don't want that, you better make your way sure and get to business. So we saw that Jonah, he forgot the God that he was a prophet of. God is God of everybody, of everything. Whether physical, spiritual, man-made, he can, he can alter a vehicle. We have a testimony that a new carburetor was provided in a vehicle. I once had a car, Celica, it was so troublesome. One time, I think the mechanic told me that the, I think the uh, fuel pump was faulty. And I kind of got tired. I said, God, I read that you did the carburetor. Come and help me fix the fuel pump. That fuel pump never disturbed me again. I still remember that test. Because I never fixed it and nothing happened. So that God, he can heal inanimate objects. Amen. 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 Nothing is beyond the control of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So whatever the thing is, put it to God. Amen. Amen. So Jonah, he has forgotten the God he is serving. So he went into the ship. But the ship was sailing in the ocean. And the ocean is still subject to God. Hallelujah. And we saw that in Jesus Christ. When the ocean became restless. And he came out and said, peace be still. Amen. Him that can still the ocean, it can also make him troublesome. Hallelujah. And for Jonah, what did he do? He had the sea to be troublesome. And the sea obeyed the master. Today, your life troubles, they will obey the master. That's why we are here. To experience God in the power of his holiness. Amen. And so the sea became troublesome. And the mariners, the Bible said they did all their efforts. And everything they know how to do. And then Jonah, he had peace. That surpassed all understanding. In the midst of the storm, what was he doing? He was sleeping. Because he knew that nothing is going to happen. He had a business with the master. And he was trying to avoid the business. He also knew the God he was serving. He just said, this God, just, I don't want to see Bishan. I don't want, just, I want to sleep. And he had a good sleep. Until the mariners found him and said, eh, oh sleeper. In the midst of this chaos, you are still sleeping. Call on your God. Maybe we say, don't worry yourself. I know the problem. In short, I am your problem. They can't believe it. When you told them the solution, they said, no, we can't do this. Say, so just bind me and throw me into that ocean. I'm believing your life. Jonah was ready to die rather than do the job. Have we ever got into such situation before? When we would rather take a ship to Tarshish than face our responsibilities. We are going to talk about it. So Jonah, he didn't want to have a fighting chance at all. You know, he said, bind me, throw me over. 
They said, no, we will not do that. We are not murderers. I said, hey, you are wasting your time. The person I'm dealing with, I know him. Anything you do to be futile, as long as I'm with you. After a while, they said, let's do it. And when they did it, what happened? Everything became quiet. And the Bible said, they praised the name of God. But as for Jonah, God is not true with him. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, Abraham told a story about a boy. Maybe I will say it. He said his nephew, Mervyn. He baptized him about 10 years ago when he was preaching. And what did Mervyn do? He went to carry an unbeliever, a Catholic girl. And you know, when a believer marries an unbeliever, one of two things will either happen. Either he brings the girl home, or the girl takes him out. In his case, the girl took him out. He became a Catholic for 10 years. Meanwhile, he was baptized in the message. So, Brabram said, after a while, maybe when his mother died or something, he started dreaming every day. And what was the dream? He would see himself coming to the Brabham Tabernacle and making confession to the prophet. That's the only dream. Every day. In our ran to the prophet and said, look, Brabram, I've been having a dream. What's the dream? He told the dream. Brabram said, I don't need interpretation for that. The dream is clear. Your, you, your place is here. You cannot run. So if, you, if you now disobey this dream, there will be a problem. And that's how he came back and he started serving the Lord. Because if you are of Christ, you cannot be of the devil. I was telling the children in the Sunday school, I said, the way this is, we are talking about evidence of having the Holy Ghost. That why are these... Uh, wonders and manifestation why they are not the evidence of the Holy Ghost. So we got to talking that a child of God is always a child of God. Just like you are a child of your parents. It, the, somebody said, if your parents, maybe you did something and they disowned you. I said, it's full time. They might disown you, but your DNA will not change. If the disowning is allowed, God should change your DNA. But after they disown you, they should go and do DNA tests again. Whether it will have altered. Nothing will alter. You are still their child. They cannot be undone. I said, that's the way we are with God. We are God's children. It cannot be undone. But if you fail to align with God, it can, if you don't come in peace, you will come in pieces. Because the devil cannot have you. Amen. How many believe that? Hallelujah. The devil cannot have God's children. It's a drawn line. The two cannot mix. Children of Cain cannot be children of Seth. And only by their fruit you shall know them. Amen. So we see that Jonah, he was God-ordained prophet. And that job, God commissioned only him for that city. No else with nobody else will do that job. And so when he was thrown into the sea, God Bible said God has prepared a very big fish. It's special. You can say, ah, but a whale cannot swallow a man. Whatever you say, congratulations. But Bible told us God prepared a special fish. Even though Christ said later that it's a whale, it's a special whale. For that purpose. And the way he carried Jonah, when Jonah saw El, what did he begin to do? He began to pray. So the same God he was running away from. And that's what happened to all these atheists. I saw one, I think his name is Ingasol or something like that. It was one of these agnostics. It's no God, I don't believe. Oh, so when he was on his deathbed, what did he say? He said, oh God, if you ever assisted, have mercy on me. On the deathbed, was it not too late? Because you cannot get away from it. It's like you are trying to pass through a wall instead of the door. Amen. And so, when he got into the waist belly, three days 
All the things, the things eating, they are wrapping over him. He began to talk. God, inside of the way belly, I cry unto you. Have mercy upon him. Are you going to do the work or not? Say, just drop me, I will do the work. Because if he won't come in peace, he will come in pieces. But I will not come, he will come. Because his creator needs him. Hallelujah. He did that for Balaam too. He told Balaam, some people are coming to you. Don't listen to them. Don't go with them. Because the job they want to do cannot be done. And Balaam said, yes sir. And when these people came and he saw the contract fee, <laughs> he said, maybe God made a mistake. God can't make a mistake. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why it was for one. When he saw the contract fee and all the bonuses and everything, brother Jerry, he thought that God made a mistake. He went back to God. God said, what again? I have told you already. He said, okay, start going. Ah! Before God finished talking, he's dressed up. He was on his way. And God said, don't go. And God came down using an angel to stop him. And yet, he could not see. And God used his donkey to talk to him. After that, he said, ah, God, let me go. Back. God, you will go. Start going. But it's only what I put in your mouth that you will say. Amen. That's the God we serve. Before him, there is no shadow of turning. When he says yes, nobody can say no. If they say no, they are wasting their time. And when Balaam got to where he's going, he did all he should do. What was he saying? He was blessing. The job they gave him, he was doing the opposite. Praise the Lord. That's the God we are serving. And so Jonah, what did he do? After three days, he began to pray and pray and God answered him because he was a child of God. When the devil tells you, God will not answer you, no use to pray, don't mind him. God say, ask and you shall be given. Amen. That's the word. That's the only thing we know. There is no scripture that says, when you pray, God will not answer. He said, when you have iniquity in your heart, then God will not hear. But if you have iniquity, what will you do about it? Confess it. Is that not it? Confess your faults one to another. And then, even when you are sick, and you are called to, and a prayer is called upon you, Bible will say, if you have committed any sin, they shall be what? Forgiven. That's the word. And that's what we believe. We should not allow the enemy to shortchange us. Hallelujah. Now, enough about Jonah. Jonah is not our concern. Because like I said, the word is for today. Amen. So, sometimes all of us, Abraham said, we do run too. We do take sheep to Tashish. We want to look at some of those things. We run from something sometimes. Sometimes, we run from responsibilities. Many of us here today, we look, you see a responsibility, you take off. Let me read uh, something for you there. He said here, and Jonah here was called on as is one of the minor prophets of the Bible to go down to this city. And here we find an example of all of us. Every one of us, we always are running from something. We run from trouble. We run from responsibilities. We were all prone to do that. We, we are, we are more prone to run than we are to stand and face it out. You see? Sometimes we find ourselves prone to run from work. Okay, that way. So, we see that. What do we do? We run from responsibilities. You know? I don't know. Whatever the responsibility. You see, ah, this thing, you, need to, you know you have to do it. But what will you do? You take the road to Tashish. You dodge it. 
you know, the easy way out. But you see, you are still going to meet it in front. That's the problem. When you dodge, it will come back. Uh-huh. If you run, one day will fight a battle and run away. What will he do? He lives to fight another day. There is no running. So let's quit running from responsibilities. Amen. I don't know what the responsibility may be. He said, we've got so many things we have to do. So much responsibility that we have to face. Everybody has got to face a certain responsibility. That's why I say we are not talking about Job today. I'm talking about the bride of Christ. Amen. Which is you and me. So, we should quit running from responsibility. Now, we also see people who run from work. Have we? He says, sometimes we find ourselves prone to run from work. We don't want to. We don't want to walk. You know? Some people just think they can make their living without working. If you are like that this morning, you have to face that responsibility. There is no way you can make a living without working. Bible said that he that does not work should not. So, if you want to eat, what will you do? You've got to work. So, if there is a provision of God for you to work, God will give you the work. Amen. Amen. So if you are here this morning trying to avoid work, you want to float, you just want to patch it up and do this and do that and just get by, you don't do that. Amen. Amen. Some students, what will they do? Maybe they have a carryover, they have some unsorted things in school, but they dodge it. Abby? You say, oh, I've gotten one job. I will could not use the certificate to work. If I'm a Christian, what will you do? You go face that responsibility. Amen. Deal with that problem and finish it up. Those who pay for your school, they didn't pay for you to be half-baked. Have you? They paid so that you can come out with a certificate. That was the intention. Why are you shortchanging yourself? We are prone to run away from responsibility. So if you are like that this morning, I am talking to you. Go back and finish your course. Or fill a form. Or whatever. I don't know what it is. But whatever it is, go back to that school and sort it out. You can't be a Christian here with all that hanging on your head. Amen. Am I speaking the word of God? Hallelujah. And so, he said, um, people run from work. So if you are running from work, looking for easy way, you go and do busy body. Let me go to Brother X's house. I do them in the morning. I go to Brother Y's house in the uh, afternoon stroke evening. Uh, the day's food is complete. That's not a life. Bible says, you go and work so that you can also help others. Amen. Amen. You know, only one person is not the person. I mean, you can't be helpers and LP. You can't be the same set of people forever. Today, you may need help. But tomorrow, you provide the help. That's progress. Abby, not that you are the only one everybody is helping forever. There is no scripture for that. Go and find work. Don't run. Amen. Don't say, oh, I am big man. I cannot do this work. That's not it. Paul, he was a big man. But he became a tent maker. So that he can work. Even though the word of God says he can eat from the work he's doing. He was a preacher. A big one for that matter. Minister for his age. But what did he do? He set an example. So I don't know who you are. Whether you are a minister or not, go and work. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, some people, they also run from the responsibility of marriage. It's the word of God. We've got to say it. Hallelujah. 
Now, let me read there before. It said, When you come to choose your wife, paragraph 49, to get married, or choose your husband, you've got to take a responsibility. That thing is a responsibility on its own. Marriage is a responsibility. Some people are avoiding it. And yet, they don't want to be Paul. We know Brother Paul now. He purposely become a eunuch for the gospel of Christ. These ones don't want to be Paul. They don't want to be Anna. You know Anna in the Bible. When her husband died after seven years of marriage, she chose to remain single for the gospel. These ones don't want to remain single, but they are looking for a sister that have rich parents. Is it the parent that will feed you? Eh? Shame on you, brothers. Praise the Lord. Some, they look for the one that have got done PhD so that she can work and collect big salary. Why can't you go and collect the PhD yourself? Because you are supposed to be the head of the house and a provider. Do you understand what husband means? Just check the word husbandry. That is somebody who takes care of livestock. They took the word from it. Yeah? So you are supposed to nurture, provide, and sustain your family. Now you are not looking for a wife to sustain you. Are you sure you are a son of God? Hey! Somebody is telling me an infidel who failed to provide for his house. You see? So you are dodging that responsibility. Brethren, you are supposed to face your responsibility. Because if you dodge today, when you are still a young man, is it when you are old that you'll be able to face it? Eh? Because if you dodge it today, you will still meet it in front. Something that you dodge has not been conquered. So it's going to pop up again. When it pops up, you may be less strong as you are today. That's why Brother Abraham referred to the ant. Bible said, go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider our ways, and be wise. And there is a time for everything. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, it says so. A time to be born and all that. So if you are dodging the responsibility of marriage... Abraham say, go face it. Amen. I don't know your own excuse. But you know yourself. Because I'm talking to you. We have left Jonah. It's you that you are the Jonah now. You are taking the ship to Tarshish. Stop that. Because when land you nowhere, you will end up in the waste belly. And you will beg. Praise the Lord. So, he said, and then you must remember, maybe you build a home, it's a nice pretty home, and then remember, as a married woman, you got to think of the responsibility of raising children. Right? So marriage is not only on his sweetie, honeymoon. There is a job there. Because God will hand over some children to you, to take care of them. Hey, Amen. So, oh, some people say, oh, oh, they will, they, will, they will alter my shape. I don't want to be pregnant. Why? Why do you get married then? That shouldn't be the idea of a believer anyway. Hey, Amen. It shouldn't be crossing your mind at all. Praise the Lord. So there's a responsibility of raising children. You know, raising children sometimes can mean you have to abandon your work. Are you getting me? So you better get it right now. Those of you who are still single and you want to have career, sometimes you have to abandon the career. You have to choose. These children, are they worth more than my career? Sometimes the choice will face you and you cannot take a ship to Tashish. I read somewhere a little girl was asking the I think she and the mother they went somewhere 
So, and then with the ASEP. So, I think uh, a purse and a bag maybe contain jewelry and all that. And then she couldn't leave it with the ASEP. So, the daughter now said, Ah, mommy, why are you carrying your bag? She be, the ASEP is sitting and waiting for her. She said, Ah, I can't leave my bag. It contains so so and so with the ASEP. She said, Eh, hey, hey. but you do leave me with the ASEP. Which is more valuable? Can you see that? You leave your children with the ASEP, but you can't leave your money with the ASEP. Which is more valuable to you? So, marriage is a responsibility. So, those of you longing to be married, know what comes with it. Because your children, God hand them over to you to take care, and you will give account. So, note carefully that those children, you are going to account for them. And when you abandon them to nannies, who sometimes in the crutch, do you know what they do? They've been doing this, you can ask my mom, since 80s. What would they do? They give them Valium or cough syrup. What would that do to them? They sleep off. So the nanny can have good time. By the time you are coming, they are awake again. Is that what you want for your children? It does their brain. Brain that is still being formed, they are already dulling it. You now be praying, God help me pray for my child oh, to be brilliant when you are the cause. So these things, they are responsibilities. And somebody has got to tell us. So it has fallen my Lord to tell you today. Amen. Amen. He said of raising the children. And you got to think of them pretty slick walls. Is going to have little dirty handprints all over them. Have we? Your house, you know how long, how much it costs to make it beautiful. Children, they will write on the wall. Yes, they are going to write on it. Will you? What will you do? You break the hand, or what? Ah, uh-huh. even your shouting should not be much, because the wall you can repaint it now. But when you damage their self-esteem, how do you repair that? One time, I don't know how true you know these internet stories. One man, he just bought uh, maybe a Jaguar. A black slick Jaguar. Very fine one, expensive. And the little son went to the motto. What was, he took a, a nail and went to the car and wrote, I love you, daddy, on the motto with a nail. Before, the daddy didn't see what was written, but it was so arranged and smart. You know, the hand, he was still writing it. He just smashed the hand and the, uh, as she was writing. Now, maybe in the fit of the rage, he realized, oh, what have I done? He quickly took the boy to the hospital. The hand is already broken. The mark is there. The paint, I mean, the damaged paint just took it to, it's still under warranty now. They just took it, paid some money, and the thing's clean back. So, the son came and said, Daddy, ah! Your car has been fixed. I love it. When will they fix my hand? Abby? The mark will always be there. Ha. So, these things are responsibilities. There are things known with children, and they are going to do it. You did it yourself. Oh, this child will not let me sleep. You too you did not let your mama sleep. It's not the first time. Sometimes our sisters, I used to ask those that I meet that after they have their first baby, I used to ask them, do you appreciate your mother now? They say yes. Because what you are seeing now is what you did for your mother. When the baby will decide to sleep in the afternoon and use the night as his own day, what will you do? And you cannot sleep. Once you fall asleep, he will cry. He wants you to play overnight and you are still going to work in the morning. That's what you did too. It's the life cycle. So do it with joy. So that you can have good account to give to your master. Amen. We should quit complaining because you have children you are complaining, complaining. What about those who don't have? Eh? So you want God to kill, like pastor once said, your children are troubling you. Should we pray that God will keep them, kill them? Abby? Should God take them away since they are disturbing you? No. 
He said, blessed is the man that have his coffers full of them. That's the word. Hallelujah. So there is a responsibility of raising children. Also, they will cost money. They will cost time. Money and time. Which is more? Time. Money is replaceable. Time is not replaceable. Once it's lost, it's lost. And it's more valuable because what you can do in time, money may not even buy it. Your affection, your training, the thing you give in time, no money can buy that. That's why, even though you have plenty of money, nobody can replace that role. That effect will show in future. If you are not there for them, when they need your training, it will show. And who is to blame? It's you. Praise the Lord. So, you said, then you got the responsibility of educating your children. Abby, you cannot leave them to be dummies. Ah, you say, he used to cry when they take him to school. Therefore, he should sit at home. Are you sure you are a parent? He can't sit at home because in future, there will be trouble. Because you need to educate them so that they can interact in the society. You don't know who they will become tomorrow. But they need to be educated. So you see, the prophet saying, every time when we preach education is of the devil, I believe the church understands what we are saying. It's when you use education for, against the word of God. Not for your meal tickets. Not for you to be able to interact. Even if we say, oh, I don't want to be an academician. I want to be selling. Selling. The, your buyer may not understand your local language. You need to speak English. Abby, if you don't go to school, how will you speak? You need to calculate the money. If you are not educated, how will you calculate? So, it's something necessary. It's only when you are going to read Bible seminary to do what now? That's all we are talking about. Or you are using intellectual against the word of God. No. But for your meal ticket, for your daily living, is compulsory. At this 21st century, we shouldn't be having illiterates again. Abby, we shouldn't. Sometimes I see children and some young adults who are still not educated. I wonder, ah, ah, what kind of parent do they have? Maybe they don't have parents. Because education is free. It may be sloppy, but it's still there. At least... If the only thing you can do is to make sure they go there and come back, it's something. Amen. And we still have children that are scoring the best from public school too. Up to today. So if at all you cannot afford the private school, let them go to the public. Make sure they get what they need to have. Because it's a responsibility. And you must not take the road to Tashish. Amen. He said, and then you got the responsibility of clothing and feeding. Ah, I say my children, they eat too much. You must feed them. Abby, if they, let me tell you, it's better they eat too much than they don't eat at all. Because if you have a child who doesn't eat, you too, you will be sick. So it's better, I can assure you, that they eat too much than they don't eat. Because if they don't eat, Every sickness will catch them. You will pay. Eh? It's not a good side to be. So it's better they are eating too much and they are healthy. So, but anyway, it's a responsibility. So if you have children, remember that they've got to feed them. And then your children cannot be going about naked on the streets now. You must clothe them. I don't say go and buy tuxedo but they must be clothed correctly. We see sometimes people who have uh, female children, they let them go, or especially all this uh, face me and slap you. They let them go about the rooms of neighbor, no pants on, nothing on. Is that a parent? They are shacking away from their responsibility. They must be properly clothed. You have female children, you must wear proper clothing for them. Beyond clothing, you know what to do with them. 
They cannot enter any wrong places. They cannot go and meet one uncle, one unbeliever, because we are in a age that is so full of defi- The devil is against virginity. And what is he doing? He's defiling them from infancy. And we, we have responsibility. So we must make sure. Don't say, ah, go and collect money from that uncle. Why? You are giving her a sense, a, a wrong direction. Don't send them to wrong places. We have seen, although those are unbelievers, we know better. You cannot, your daughter, go and collect money from that man. Even if the man is owing you, that's not the right person in the room. You better go there yourself. And don't send them out late in the night. For what? You get up your bed and go and buy it. Because you have a responsibility. We know God protects, but you do your part. Amen. Amen. Say, 10 o'clock, go and buy us bread. A girl? Why? You go and buy it. Even a boy in this age. So parents, if you have been doing that, that's why the word came. You, Baba, go and buy it yourself. Because it's already late. You, you can, you are stronger and people can even look at you and be scared. But those little ones, what is their chance? So let's be careful. Amen. He said, everything is a responsibility. And it is so easy when the responsibilities face us to shack from them. And we find out that marriage is a responsibility in all manners. I'm still on marriage. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So marriage is a responsibility. I'll read something else. He said, paragraph 53, he said, but to face up to responsibilities, sometimes it takes the very eye off of us to do that. We have talked about mother now. As a father, to face up the responsibility to give your child a whipping. Sometimes, oh, lovely little boy, but he has done something worth wiping. And say, oh, we are in a modern age. The word of God says, fire the rod and spoil the child. I don't care what the society says. Praise the Lord. Government in Nigeria is not even talking. It's the people that are talking their own. It's only child abuse that everybody is against. When you beat a child as if uh, you are trying to kill a snake that you will not eat. No, that's wrong. But there is a way to beat properly. Correction is in love. Parents, when you beat a child, you feel the pain, even more than the child. But you know in your mind that if you don't correct this thing now, there will be a problem in the future. And why are the children turning worse today? Because people in our own generation, we, they beat us when we commit offense. We are now become too civilized. We don't want to beat them and they are now worse. They say, ah, statistics have shown. Which statistics? It's just lies. Bible said, spoil the rod and, I mean, spare the rod and spoil the child. But because they are against the word of God, we should not follow them. Let's follow the word. If a child does something worthy of Cainy, do so correctly. Not like a deranged father, you know. Beat anyhow, as if you want to kill the child. That's not the purpose. There is a purpose. There is a correct way, whether in the hand or in the buttocks, or a proper punishment for that offense, so that the person is a foolishness in the heart of a child. It is the rod of correction that scares it away. Abby, so you must do it. Brabant said, "I know we fathers and mothers. Ah, don't." You don't want to beat. It takes a lot of decision making to flog them. Especially, maybe first time offense. They will say, I'm warning you. I think I read somewhere. When the child knows that, father stop at warning. He will do it. Say, I'm warning you next time. He will do it next time. I'm every time warning you. He will do it all the time too. But when that warning becomes a reality, he will not do it again. 
And already God has put the fear of fathers in their children. When you tell a child, I'm going to report you to your father, it's already enough scare. But today, now all those is gone because of civilization. Praise the Lord. He said, we have that responsibility to give your child a whipping. Them little fellows. You don't want to do that. But as a father or mother, you've got to face that responsibility of raising that child. Because the Bible said, spare the rod and you spoil your son. And that still stands good in the sight of every psychologist there is in the world. It's not today they've been saying it to. In the time of prophet, they have all the statistics, data, all the children that are kids. They don't, they don't turn different from the other ones. It's a lie. Because if it's not true, the Bible will not say it. Amen. That still remains God's truth. This is in America. If there have been more, of course, the message is not to Americans alone. It's to the bride and to the world. If there had been more of that practice, we wouldn't have had so much juvenile delinquency and stuff. And the rust we got in the world today. But the old golden rule of home has been broken long time ago. And they let the kids do whatever they want to. It's a shame. Do you know one Nigerian boy um, in London... Maybe he committed suicide or something. We don't know. But they found the body in one sea. In one ocean recently. Last week. I'm sure some people read about it. This boy is studying in uh, Oxford Brooks University. I think uh, maybe it's a sickle cell or something. I've forgotten what the problem was. So in the, in the mo- it, what did he do? Around 8.44. He just said, Mom, I'm going out. Mommy did not ask. A 19 year old boy, where are you going in particular? That's not how to train a child. Child is just, I'm, I'm out. Out of where? You better come back and sit down. But that's what they do. She didn't ask the boy, where are you going? He said, I'm going out. The boy went out. Few hours. Maybe she, the mother even went to bed. The next morning is not in his room. She started saying, oh, help me find my boy. Why you didn't do the right job too? How can the boy leave the house not telling you specifically where he's going? He's just a boy of 19 years old, but they say he's a man. Abby? And now, he, maybe they are still investigating. Maybe he killed himself. Maybe something happened to him. We don't know. That's not how to train up a child. If you are leaving your house, as long as you are there, even we parents, what do you do? You tell your wife, I'm going so, so, and so. If the wife is not there, tell the child, I want to do... What is the big deal in saying where you are going? I say we are going to commit sin. Because I don't know why you hide. Going somewhere, I'm going to do and do so, 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 so. I will be back so, so time. If there are changes, thank God we have fun. Instead, I have to do this and that again. Abby, that's transparency. But the child just went and mommy, I'm out. Okay, see you. Is that to leave? Mommy, you can't do that in my house. Out of where? Let's agree to disagree. Where are you going? You are going to park at 8.44 in London. It's cold. Don't go. Abby, you have the right to say so. But over there, what will the boy do? If the mother say, don't go out, he will call 911. And they'll say, you are pressing the boy. They've ruined parenthood. So our brethren who are living there, they have job to do. Because the word of God will not be altered. Whether you live in London, you live in Canada, or US, you must wipe the child when it needs to be wiped. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's the word. There's nothing we can do about it. So, you see, responsibility, I was telling a brother, he said, oh, I'm planning of relocating and all that. I said, well, it's not bad. But I believe that God, you are adapted to the problem of Nigeria. You already know Nigeria problem. And when you get there, they have their problem too. 
It's not no free lunch. Oh. Say, are you prepared? I say, start preparing yourself now for the problem of abroad. Because they have their problem too. Because the grass is always greener at the other side. Until you get there. When you get there, are you prepared? He said, I'm working on it. I said, you better work on it. So that when you get there, everything will become strange. Amen. So that responsibility, your geographical location will not take it away. But if you take the road to Tashish, you will have to face it. Amen. We are talking about running from the responsibility of marriage. You see, I have something to read. He said, paragraph 6, 7. He said, if I was a young... This is another one now. If I was a young man and looking for a wife to be married, and here stood a girl that met every qualification that I thought it took to make a woman. Why? Morally, she was a queen and lovely and a fine personality. A real Christian, you know, qualities of a sister. It's not just she's fine. She must be a real what? Christian. Don't go and find them outside and say she's going to church too. You will pay down the road. Aha. Everything that I could think of to make a good wife. He says, no matter how much I say she's perfect, she's exactly right. She isn't mine till I accept her and the responsibility of her being my wife. Is it clear? If you see a girl, ah, this sister, perfect. All you think about is she's perfect. You have to go tell her. You have to face that responsibility. There is a process. Right? It's not back door. If you are not bold enough, to approach the process correctly, then you are not ready to marry. If you are still doing the backside, eh? No, there is no backside. So you've got that response. It's not enough to say she's perfect, she's good, she's okay, she's good for me. That is your problem. Until you let her know she's not your own. Amen. Amen. And brethren, brothers here, if you are courting a sister, I don't care whether she's in London. That's your choice. You've got to visit her. No amen now. (laughs) It's the word of God. You have to visit. Because courtship is trying to know one another. So how will you know her when you don't visit? It is your choice to go and choose her far away. And you must face that responsibility. If you take a road to Tashish, you will pay for it down the line. So you've got to do scheduled visits and unscheduled visits. You show up unannounced. It's part of knowing. Because when she knows you are coming, all the room will be clean and sparkling. She will make sure everything is fine. Put perfume, cook nice soup. Abby, you will never know the truth. But when you showed up unannounced, all the bed does say, hey, you know what you are trying to marry. And where you should work hard on. That's the purpose. Not to say, ah, she's dirty. She's not worthy. No. It's to know what to work on, on one another. Abby, you are not in courtship to fail. Praise the Lord. So all those things must be done. If you have to take flight to my duguri, and Boko Haram is there. You have to go. Because it's a responsibility. And you cannot go and tell God, God, you know, no, it's already something that must be done. You know it before you enter. You know she's living in my duguri. Have you don't know? Uh-huh. So you've got to do it. Oh, my salary is poor. Then take night bus. But you have to go. We are talking about a man running from the presence of the Lord. Because how will you know? Or you think they say marriage is a responsibility. It starts, in fact, before you choose her, 
it's still a responsibility. Abby, you pray. You have been praying and praying through. Is that not where you've started? Now you now want to run when it's called. She says she's far. Far where? Praise the Lord. You take night bus. Eh? My Duguri is 24 hours journey. You take it. It doesn't matter. And if your own is not as far as my Duguri, then you are lucky now. So what are you waiting for? Pay your visit. Pay your visit. Regular, unscheduled, and scheduled. It must be paid. Don't say, I will do FaceTime. That's not, it won't replace the visits. Because when you want to do FaceTime and the room is dirty, she will say, Love, I will call you back, I will call you back. Then she will prepare everything or go to the side that is clean and do it. It's, it's not the same. <laughs> Technology cannot, re- cannot completely replace the old fashioned way. So those of you who are yet to get into it and you are eyeing the girl in far away land know the responsibility. You cannot do it pash pash It's all these things you consider in making a choice. Amen. Amen. And you know, they say something. That is at the house that the chicken doesn't have value. Once you take the chicken and say, ah, see how heavy it is. Some of our sisters that you see every day that think, ah, ah, ah. I pity you. May the Lord help you. You see, sisters that are hearing the same word you are hearing every day, what are you waiting for? You don't value them because you see them every day. The ones you don't see, what do you think they are doing? How much word are they hearing? I don't know what's wrong with us. In our own time, sisters are not even plenty like this. And we still marry. And you now, they are all over, and you are still single. Looking for what? Don't let me change my sermon. <laughs> They've been praying and praying and you are there looking for what now? What are they looking for? You want that sister be with Saskolia and everything because you don't see her well. When you start seeing her, you will know. These ones are common, are common, are common, Abby. Every day. And they are hearing the word. They are hearing the same thing. They are made already. And you are saying, ah, that one is that one. You will see now. Praise the Lord. I don't know why people, they, it's always the grass is always greener at the other side. I don't understand that. Yes. They always, they always think that, far, that side is better. Who told you? Those are that side, they are looking at this side. So that's human being for you. You see them, young, young ones, they are dying, they are gray. Meanwhile, the old ones are doing it black. What's wrong with us? The ones at that side, where the girl is, they are looking here. Why don't they marry her in that place? Oh, you think there are no brothers there? They know her better now. But you, you are looking far. You don't know nothing. Until you get closer, you now see you get work to do. You better be ready. Sisters, keep on praying. God will give you the flesh of your flesh and the bone of your bone. Amen. He will not give you unbeliever. Maybe they are not believing enough. Amen. Let's fire on. Eh? You know, it's black back in now. When you go far, you think they are, they are as clean as you look them. They know how to make it well. When they come at the perfect... We used to see that in Lagos Island. When you see them out, in fact, you think they don't go to the toilet. When you see where they are living, toilet pass in the room. Ask Brother Mara, is there? Where, where is he? He can tell you. In Balogun there, toilet, sewage, pass through the room. They are that right there. But when you see them outside, you think they don't even go to the toilet. It's just packaging. Why not deal with what you can see plain, plain and be saved? <laughs> Hallelujah. You brothers, sorry for you. <laughs> I don't know what to say anyway. Because the sisters are just here. 
and they can't get married. You see, even brethren, some of them, we are not encouraging that, but I've seen brethren in other places, they don't even have work and they are still married. You, you have work. Sometimes they have car. What are you looking for now? And they can't still get married. But Abraham said, no matter how you see the girl, she's perfect. And you, don't, you are not ready to take that responsibility. It's not yours. Amen. Amen. Let's, let's talk to ourselves once. Do you want to become a two sailor before you marry? Eh? Abby, you don't hear that even at 25 they are becoming, they are going to menopause. So what are you waiting for now? You want to get to menopause before you marry. So that we now be praying. God pray, oh, fruit of the womb. For what? Let's fire on. Praise the Lord. I hope you are not angry. Even if you are angry, it's good. Amen. Anger is better than despair. Don't be hopeless, be angry. No wala. But don't let the sun set over it. Amen. Amen. That's the word. Amen. Amen. Read uh, paragraph 69. You say, when you marry this certain woman that you have chosen, then you are one then. We are still talking about the responsibility of marriage. You and I, your wife, what have you become? You are one. Whether she's dead to you, you are one. And you cannot run away from it. No, you know, Moses, last week we talked about Moses giving them a writing of divorcement. When you just say, ah, this is my wife, she's so dirty, you are tired. Jesus said from the beginning it was not so. And whosoever do that is adultery. So no way out again. No. Moses error, don't pass. So you can, no way out. That's why you should think it properly. And you should consider do all the visits, all the things you need to do, and don't do a uh, long nose when the thing you are looking for is right in your pocket there. Because, and you sisters too, Pastor, thank you. Eh? You want the brother, what do they, beard gang, Abby, what do they say? Eh? Beard gang, eh, broad shoulder, Abby, always wearing tie. Is that the thing? People lose jobs. I'm telling you, some people in oil industry, they have lost job now. And they are used to big man living. They can't do anything. Uh-huh. How will you do it? There is nothing in this world that is starting. Only the word of God is. If the brother is filled with the Holy Ghost, and he believes the word, he will look for a job if he lost one. It will make a good living for you. It will do all he has to do. Praise the Lord. So, don't look at the present circumstance. That circumstance may not be palatable. But it's not the end of the journey. So, sister, so if you are high-minded, long neck, short, cut it off for your own good. When the brother comes, this one is too short. That one is too tall. Which one, which one do you create, self? <laughs> eh? Oh, this one is too fat. This one is so thin. It's time we cut. <laughs> Who told you that? Are you the creator? Can you make one? No, Can they cannot make now? You see, there was one article. I mean, is it a cartoon I saw? They said, woman, what kind of man do you want? He said, I want it dark, tall, Broad shoulder, handsome, everything, God fearing. They say, oh, Yeah, take clay, make him for yourself. <laughs> because the man doesn't exist now. Eh? The man that has everything doesn't exist. The woman that has everything doesn't exist. You must lose some and gain some. Some, you build it yourself. The problem is, our brothers, they are not ready to work. That's why I'm on them. They want ready made eh? if you want ready made you may go and buy bus corner unfortunately be ready to do the work let me tell you that was what we had when we started 
we were ready. We don't look for ready. What we wanted was a sister that is of God. And we are ready to do the rest. And we don't even have money. Some of you are better off today. And you can't do much. Sorry. People, even today, if you go to the Inderland, they are struggling, but they are married. Happy in their home. You say, ah, this brother, what are you doing? Ah, I'm just, I know a brother that is frying Akara and his wife. He's still married. You, you are not frying Akara. Oh. You are even driving a car. You can't take the decision. What now? What are you waiting for? You want to become Dangote? Eh? Not everybody will be Dangote. And Dangote was held by Nigerian government. If not, it won't be Dangote. Fact. So, what are you saying? Take a step of faith. There is time for everything. If your time pass you, sorry will be your name. Eh? Don't let your time pass. That's why the Bible said it. There is time for everything. When your time has come for something, the thing will be showing up for you all the time. That's when you know it's your time. If you miss it, you will pray. We will join you, Jean, because we love you. But it is your own. Amen. He said, when you marry this certain woman, I don't want to preach on marriage. I don't know why I keep going there. <laughs> When you marry this certain woman that you have chosen, Bible Bible said you are one. Bible said you are one. So, and that's where you should look at it from. The woman I want to marry, I'm going to be one with her. What kind of woman? What is important then? Bible says the Holy Ghost. All other things shall be added. Jesus said so. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. Then all and his righteousness. If you are looking for a wife or a husband, first thing, God. All other things you will add it. If you want her to be speaking for her, there is a school to teach her. If you want her, her to be walking like a queen, there is a school to do it. Abby, where they teach them boys, just pay her and they will teach her. She walk well. She not work jagba jagba like yellow day. You do that. All that can be fixed. But because you are not ready to face responsibility. That's the problem of the brothers. They are looking for, oh, she's a daughter of a... Uh, ah, brother Dele. Sorry, oh. Maybe, ah, he has a bench now. Okay. He won't do anything for you. You face your responsibility. I can, he's my brother. <laughs> he didn't trouble his own parents and his wife's parents. He faced his responsibility himself. You too, you will do the same. And you are saying, ah, I want PhD order, PhD order. Eh, go and get it now. There are plenty in university environment. But do they have oligos? That's the question. Look, uh -huh. you Barbara said you have to be one with ah. Who do you want to be one with? Only ghosts and only ghosts will be one. That's what is crucial. I'm not saying, you know, you cannot... All our sisters are fine and beautiful. And look where. But all of them cannot be my wife. I have to settle down for one. And be content with that. You have to do the same. Sometimes they cannot make a choice. They are looking. Kami, kami, kami covetousness. Settle for one. They are all here, they are all children of God. You will get the same thing. It's just package that is different. It's just like you too. All the men, you are basically the same. Even one philosopher, I think it's Socrates, that say, he said, all men are by nature the same. It's their habits that take them far apart. Everybody is basically the same. And our habits are more or less the same because we hear the same word of God. Amen. So what are you looking for now? Be decisive. Make a decision today. Tomorrow may be too late. Amen. 
So, and that's the way you are with Christ. When you see him manifested and made real, then you are part of him. He is part of you. And together you are part of the message. Amen. That's the same way. He said, every time he say, talk, let the man so love his wife. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. It's a parallel. I mean, what do I say now? It's a correct example of one another. They are parallel, the same typology as husband and wife, so Christ and the church. And so your paramount, paramount interest should be Christianity in the life of your supposed partner. Not all these other things. I'm not saying don't marry a beautiful woman. It's good. It's a good ideology. But behind the beauty, let there be Christ. Amen. Amen. Because you want to have beautiful offspring. It's good. But it's God that will choose the offspring now. Sure yes. you know. Uh -huh. And inside all of you, there are various genes there. Because you didn't just drop from the sky. You have ancestral lineage. Some will have been ugly in your lineage. Some will be beautiful. All of them are in your body there. So it's God that will choose one. You don't know, Abby. <laughs> you better know. Because in your offspring, there are every kind. And you are carrying them there. As you are saying. So which one will God drop now? So it's not just the beautiful faces. It's good. But choose Christ. Amen. And make decisions. Don't be undecided. Every day, the same story. Make progress. Amen. Hallelujah. So we are still on. I think, uh, let's leave marriage alone now. Abby, our brothers are going to get married, Abby. Yeah. Yes or no? Yeah. They can't talk. Yeah. They should decide now what's to meditate there. <laughs> Mbo, you are meditating. <laughs> they have been praying since. They don't believe the prayer. They say the promise of God is not hard to pray for. Waiting happen. When God has shown you, why are you waiting? You don't even believe your own prayer. You start, charity begins at home. Start from your belief and take a step. If we have read it here. No matter how you say, ah, she's the one. Oh, she's the one. One and only. You are just overriding around. Somebody will just take her. You will see now your eyes will clear. <laughs> and you say, oh, they cannot marry my wife, my boy. <laughs> you are just consoling yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you will see. The word also told me that all wrong will be corrected. Even if you marry wrong, it will be corrected there. So how come? Let's balance it. Eh? When you waste time, she will... Abby? She will go for somebody else. If she will go. Because only God is unique. You are tired plenty. They are plenty. Uh, you think you are unique. You are unique. True, true. Okay, let's be waiting now. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now to ministers of God. Let's leave this marriage thing though. <laughs> I know. I just have told them it's a responsibility. Our newly married couple, I'm sure they know now that it's, it's beyond <laughs> that. Uh, let's quickly see at that side. You don't pass that one. Now you see every day now. <laughs> that time is just occasional and it's so sweet. Now, in fact, you wake up in the middle of the night beside you. Sometimes you say, ah, let me go out, self. It's a responsibility. You are not going any out. Stay there. Where do you want to go now? Ah, ah. <laughs> praise the Lord. So it's more than the first uh, sparks. But you see, you must retain the sparks. That's part of the responsibility. It must not fade. You see now, it's a job. Oh. <laughs> That's why the apostles, when Jesus spoke, finished. They said, ah, it is not good to marry then. But he just ah, no, no, no. Everybody cannot receive that. It's good to marry. 
But you must be ready to face the responsibility. The reason why it's tough is people are not ready to face the responsibility. When they see the challenge, they say, marriage is for better, for worse. But they are saying, it's for better, for better. So, they are not saying it at all. But when they see the trouble, that's how they take off. Because they are not expecting trouble. But there is always trouble. Eh? There is trouble in making a way. Ask pastor whether there is no trouble. There is, but he overcome. <laughs> but Abraham said, how will God turn around and call you an overcomer when there is nothing to overcome? There will be something, I don't know what you will face, but we are not the kind of preacher that will tell you, once you accept Christ, everything is smooth. It's not smooth. The old guns of hell is on you, but you are an overcomer. Amen. Amen. Because you will come out successfully. That's the assurance God has given us. That in all of it, we will overcome. Amen. So I'm giving you the same assurance. That when you face that marriage, you will overcome. Don't be afraid. Don't say, ah, in this economy, what is Brother Femi saying? I'm saying the word. Abi, what do you want to do? You want to go and be committing fornication. You are not of the world now. Those people in the world, they can say, ah, I don't want to marry because they know what they are doing. Can you do that? Eh? You can't. The word of God forbids you. But the word of God encourages you to marry. So take God's encouragement and leave what God said don't do, which is better. You want to go and sin. Every day you come and cry, God forgive me. Is that, what kind of child is that? Committing mistake every day. Your parents will be tired of you now. Do his will. Do what he says. Say, God, oh, this thing. Nobody is sure of marriage. When you want to pick your wife, you do it in faith. Go and read the sermon Perseverance. Say, everything that anybody has got to do in this world, he must live by faith. Or else it will not be successful. So when we took our wife, we did it in faith. We don't know what we will find there. But we believe that the word of God say, this is saying, let her be a Christian, don't marry her. Not. All those things, and we, we made God to be obligated. God, this is your word. We have followed it. That's your job. Follow the word of God. God is obligated to his word. Amen. It's not you that will bring it to pass. Maybe you are thinking that you are the one to make it work. You just do your part. God will do his own part. And your wife too will do her part. Or the husband will do his part. And everything will become a whole. Amen. And it will work. Amen. Don't look at the word as your example. It's failing out there. It must fail. That's the word. Their marriage must fail. It's not based on the word. It's based on emotion. It's based on whatever, but not on the word. Yours is based on the word. It will not fail. Amen. Amen. Even from your courtship, it will not fail. Once you believe that you are not in need to fail, because some people, they want to, they have seen three girls. They want to cut all the three. What kind of demon is that? Please be delivered. Brethren, you are still available to pray now. Come over, we will pray for you. You don't need to cut three people before you know the right one. You start with one, and that's all. I cutted only my wife. That's all. Praise the Lord. So when you are still having covetousness, they are all the same. Once they have the Holy Ghost, it's all. The just packaging that is different. Amen. And sisters too, the same. Mm? That brother, I like tall and brown. I also like short and yellow. What do we do now? And God said, your elders or fathers pray unto me with idols in their hearts. What did I do? I answered them, don't put idol there. Oh. Leave God to do his work. Amen. Amen. Now to ministers of God. Ministers, they also sometimes shack from speaking truth. The way I said it now, maybe I will not be popular now. 
Nobody will come and say, but I come and cancel me. Because they say, ah, that brother came. But I'm not here to be popular. I'm here to speak the word. I can stand alone. I'm not afraid to be alone. I'm never, I don't, I'm not depressed if I'm alone. So I passed that stage long time ago. And I know I'm not alone. Once I speak the word of God, God will take care of the rest. So I'm not a populist candidate. I'm not looking for votes. So I can speak as God directs. Amen. So here, he said, ministers, they are shacking away from the true word of God. Let me read that quickly. Okay, yeah. Even, paragraph 15, even many times we find this is hard to say, but it's true. That ministers many times shack a responsibility for standing for the true word of God when they are confronted with it. You see, we see that in our own circle. They see it. Ah, this is the word, but maybe because of affiliation. Oh, that is my friend. Oh, we belong to. Shame on you. Hallelujah. He said, they will shack that responsibility. When the truth of the word of God is brought face to face with we human beings, we are prone to shack back onto the last resource. You see, ministers, they do it. Congregation alike. 54. Even as, it, as I said, ministers, they come face to face with the truth and then walk away from it. See, there seems like there is something that they don't want to face up to it. You see, there may be other reason, you know, other underlining thing. They say maybe the friend is the one giving them money. So, and if they go against that one, it will it will not be their friend again. But you see, we must face that responsibility. In case of denomination, they will send them out. They will lose their music. But in house, they can lose their. I mean. Uh, what do you call it now? They are carcass. In a carcass. Oh, I want to be their friend. Maybe they are getting something. All our life should not be based on getting something. It should be based on the word of God. Yeah. Amen. That's how Abraham said, I don't care whether my trousers match my shirt or I use soda cracker and branch water. As long as my life matches the word. Sometimes it means resources won't flow. They won't call you to come and do missionary trips. Because they know who you are. But you got to face the word. And stand for it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's move on. Now. Let's leave ministers alone. Believers. Coming to us. Sometimes. The word of God is revealed to us. I once remember one fellow. A long time ago. I don't want to mention his name. Some people will know him. He was a friend of my brother, Brother Felix. He came to live with us. I think he did so for many years. He will come to church. But you see, even though he has nothing against the word, you know Jesus Christ is God, is proven. Every time, but he never baptized. For how many years? Two years. Coming to church, it will be on Wednesday, it will be Sunday, except it's not around. He knew this is the truth. But he wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. And many, some people are like that. They see that, ah, this thing they are saying is in the Bible. It's true. But maybe because of their associates. Oh, maybe their family will cast them out. Oh, something or the other. Believers, we should never be like that. Amen. Let me read paragraph 56. Now, being brought to, into the presence of God. Believers now. And see when God made a promise. And God is obligated to that promise. And when he brings that promise to pass, then people are afraid to face up to the responsibility of coping with the message of the hour. We find it everywhere. People will know the message of the hour. We know what it entails. Even though they, I think it's in this sermon. Brabham said, 
you see a lot of things about people. Many of them, you can't even tell them. He said, thousand. I see people like this. He said, the only goes to say, don't ever say it out. So, all those discernment you see, they are only a fraction. They are the ones God allow him to say. He said, many, he said, if you say that, you will ruin everything. Some people, he will not tell them. Maybe they are children of hell. You just let them go to their hell. It's hard to say, but he said, the only goes to say, don't say it. And yet, he keeps showing him. Do you see it? He keeps seeing everything, but to say it. And, you know, sometimes you see something, ah, this thing will help this person. God say, don't help him. Leave him alone. We should thank God that he revealed his things to us. I was in, I was, I have to mark it and say, wow. He said, so what he sees, he, so, he said, keep seeing them. And when he wants to tell the person, even one on one, God will say no. You cannot tell him. Why am I seeing it there? It's him more again. And yet you cannot tell. We see all this, and the ones he says that they are just fraction. Maybe the person needs it. And he say, and it will be good for the person. Some this person is not my child. You can see it, it's not my business. When God makes us his business, we should appreciate him. That's why when you call the preacher, you should thank God. Hallelujah. You should go home rejoicing that, eh, they talk about me. God, because you didn't tell that person about yourself. It's God that picked it out and talk about you. He's interested in you. It's an opportunity to latch on. When the devil says you are not a child of God, remind him that what, so so day I went to church, they talk about me. He's chose I'm a child of God. But it is whom God loveth, a child that he loved, that he rebukes. If he's a bastard, it's not his business. He won't rebuke him. When he did it for Cain, what did Cain do? Cain refused. And he didn't do much again. He left him. But if he was a child of God, he would not leave him. He must bring him back. Praise the Lord. So, the Bible says, if you are without chastisement, then you are not of God. So, if you are receiving chastisement correctly, then you are a child of God. And you should celebrate that. Amen. We are talking to believers. They are shacking away from the responsibility of coping with the vindicated word of God, message of the hour. You know, some people, they find it so hard. Our sisters... Say, oh, we to dress like the world. Why? Why is it so hard to cope with the message? When it is vindicated, you must not shack away from that responsibility. If the word of God say we don't touch a card, you should not touch it. If it says we don't drink alcohol and you are in first class of any airline and they offered you, don't drink. Don't say nobody is seeing you. Praise the Lord. And if we don't have boyfriends and girlfriends here, yeah, don't have it. The word of God forbids you. Amen. We should learn to cope with the message of the hour. Whatever the message says, let's cope with it. Because that is our life for today. Amen. Don't say, oh, the own is too hard. Oh, can you cook? Are you saying the way of God is too hard for you? Uh -huh, I'm coming there. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah, yeah. God is our husband, we are the bride of Christ. So what's hard in obeying your husband? So believers, learn to cope with the message of the hour. Don't take a sheep to Tashish. That's not where God wants you. I don't care your circle. You are not going to be the first billionaire in the message. And you will not be the last. So, but don't let your money pull you away from God. Amen. We are on it. 62, paragraph 62. We are talking to believers now. You say, <laughs> 12, 13. Uh, how does the time go so fast? Say, for instance, I said I was going to West, and you pointed me this way. Well, the first thing you know, 
I will run plumb I pass my target. I'm not west. Well, what if somebody points me down this way? I go that way, I pass my target again. I went southwest. Well, as long as there's a question, which way is west, there's got to be a direct answer somewhere. And when these questions confront us about the Bible truths, there's got to be the right answer somewhere that's right and it's got to be there. 63. And when we see something presented, I think instead of just run away, say, ah, nonsense, I couldn't believe a thing like that. I couldn't believe that. Why don't you take the Bible and sit down and face up to it? Study it. You are here in the meeting now. Just look it over. Check it out yourself with the word. Check the word by the word. That is the only way to make it tell the truth. And it must tell the truth from Genesis to Revelation. Christ is the revelation of the old Bible. In him, Christ, all the fullness. Fulfilling all of the prophecies of the Bible is met unconditionally in Christ Jesus. Because it was God manifested in the flesh. Amen. Amen. What are we saying? If there is a word of God, a message, don't just say, I don't believe in God. There only is too much. What does the word say? Check it. Ask questions. Because if there is a Bible question, definitely there is a Bible answer. Don't just take the road to Tashish. Oh, that is your own job. Let me go my own. You can't continue that way for a long time. Because it's going to catch up with you. A responsibility that you avoided will still catch up with you. And then it may be too late. So believers, let's check the word. Let's be like the people of Berea. When they hear the word, they check with the scripture. Is it the word? Is it correct? And when they have found the truth, what do they do? They live by it. They cope. Oh, I'm a messy believer. That's who I am. Don't be a message believer and a deeper life. No. Or a message believer and a Pentecostal. No. Be a message believer. There is no mixture. We are a virgin bride of Christ. Impregnated only by the word of God. We don't take human being creed. Amen. They are not for us. Human idea, not for us. Only the word of God is for us. Amen. Amen. And that's what we should cope with. When the message forbids a thing, let's say we don't want this. Don't see how you can still do it and be correct. That's what we do today. When the word of God is against something, you want to see which other word again supports it. Quotes, now fighting quotes. Meanwhile, Christ is one. Amen. Let's continue. Paragraph says, says, that's the same thing the message is. You might say it's right or this or that or the other and say I sympathize with it. I believe it's the truth but you've got to accept it. It's got to become part of you and you a part of it. That's it. So when you have the word of God, don't just say, ah, okay, it's good, it's good, I like it. It's got to be part of you. It must be practiced by you. Amen. You must bring it out. We must see the fruit in your life. Because the word of God, is. Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. And they have got to bring forth fruits. Amen. But if your fruit is not aligned with the word, then it shows you don't believe. Believer believes the word. Hallelujah, all the time. See, continue. I want to see if I can finish this, my reading. Okay. He said, and so we find out that we have many easy ways to go. Ships going down to Tashish. For it is easy. You see? Many times 
We just say, uh, what does the word say? We find the ship going to Tarshish. Because that road seems easier. I don't forget. He said, narrow and straight is the way that leads to heaven. But what about the road that leads to destruction? Broad and many are going. That's the easy road. Huh? And there is no royal road to success. Abi? Anything that you have to do that is good is never easy to achieve. Even the children of the queen, when they went to, I think one of them did a Red Cross pilot or something. If he didn't learn it well, he will crash and die. There to not say, ah, this one a royal blood. Oh. Uh-huh. He must learn, he must know how to navigate and read the meters and instruments. If not, if he dare get on top of that thing, he's dead. So there is no other way. No other way. Let's follow the way. No royal road. Don't shack from responsibility. I don't know the responsibility that may be facing you today in your life. Seek the correct way and follow it. Because if you find the easy way, you will pay down the road. You say the easy way is irresponsibilities. It just flows in. You have everything coming. Everybody likes you. And everybody, you know, nobody disagrees with you. You disagree with nobody. Hear no evil, see no evil, talk no evil. And you are a message believer. And when they are shaming Christ, you are laughing with them. Abi, what kind of representative are you? Because you want to belong. You want to be the friend of everybody. Ah, and they saw those Christians. Oh, maybe they say we should not wear trousers. Okay now, why are they even wearing clothes? These people don't know the word. They don't know how to place it. And you cannot join them in that joke. Amen. But because you don't want to offend them, you keep quiet. You say, push over, flop over. Why? I don't care who you are and what you are standing for. Actually, decent thinking people will think more of you if you stand for your conviction of what is right. At least, people if they know this one, no, it won't do that. That's why the Bible said, let your moderation be known to all men. Let them know who you are. What you stand for. Don't take the road to Tashish by blending. You just blend in. If you are in Rome, be like Romans. Be a Christian. Even in Rome. Amen. Stand out. They will respect you. Amen. He said, Christianity is um, part of paragraph 77. Christianity is a everyday rugged living for God in the presence of the world. It's not just living for God inside your room. It has to be in the presence of the world. No one that says, set the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Right there. You know, amen. It's a, the constant burning of the fire and love of God in the heart that sets you afire and put you out yonder with the people and making convert to Christ responsibility. You know, how do we worship God? It's only when you are in the church, it's when you will outside too. You know, Bible says we are the written epistle, read of all men. We've got to put out our life there, showing who we are for Christ everywhere. You might be on the high level. Those high level people, they should see Christ in you. Amen. If you are in the low level, Christ has his children everywhere. It's not all these level and things that define us. Praise the Lord. It's the Christianity, it's the Christ in you that matters. So that's why he put you where you are. No wonder Mordecai told Esther. He said, who knows whether for this same reason that God brought you to the kingdom. Oh, don't say I'm a big man. Oh, I cannot do that. 
Maybe that's why God put you there. So that you can be a big man for Christ. Amen. Amen. I urge you not to shack away from that responsibility. Because that's why God is depending on you there. That, ah, I have one of my daughters there. It's that click. I want him to shine for me there. And then, you are shacking away. You are dimming the light. Don't forget, say, you are the light of the world. Eh? And you cannot light a candle and you now put it under the table. How will it bring light? That's why God puts you where you are so that you can shine for the light. Don't be afraid to shine for the light. There is no power above the power of God. Praise the Lord. We are told when we went to Israel that I think, um, is he, I've forgotten the number now, is it five armies? or something, will be keeping one Israeli civilian. I've forgotten the number now, but it's some large number. So because there is a settlement they have forgotten now. So they say Israel, they withdraw from the settlement and allow the Palestinians to take over. So we ask our guide, ah, ah, it's your land now, why did you withdraw? He told us that in that place, maybe they need five Israeli soldiers for every civilian there. So the cost was too much. You know, for every civilian, five soldiers protecting them. They said, so they found out that it's too expensive to keep Israelis there. So they withdrew and allowed Palestinians. Now, if Israelis is protecting his own citizen that way, what do you think God is doing for you? <laughs> How many? But because we don't see it, we don't know. Let me tell you, angels are watching over you. All time, 24-7. You say, what is my scripture? When Isaiah, I know, Elisha, when the king of Syria complained that, ah, he was having a cabinet meeting, and he complained that, who is revealing our secret to the Israelis? Somebody mentioned that, look, okay, nobody. But there is one prophet there. This meeting that we are doing now is life. He's seeing us life. He said, even what you do in your bedroom, the man, they see him. Ah! The king said, oh, I can't stand this. See the foolishness of man. He said, now send soldiers. Go and arrest him. When they told him, whatever you do, the man, say, I see nothing when you are sending the soldier. And they got there in the night. And the uh, Geazi, when he wanted to go and throw away water, eh? he ran back inside. Wait, Kilele. He went to the master of God. We are in trouble. Soldiers have surrounded our house. And they are so plenty. And the guy said, what is the problem now? No while now. Be doing water. They said, oh, I want to move I said, soldiers outside. I said, oh God. Those that are with us are more than them. And I say to you, those who are with you are more. Amen. Hallelujah. And the boy said, ah, what are you saying, your guy? I can't see anybody with us. We are alone. You are not alone. Amen. Hey, man. Christ is with you. Amen. He said, lo, I'm with you to the end of the world. And he prayed, God, open his eyes. And when he saw all the mountains everywhere full of chariots of fire waiting for one instruction. Eh? He praised God. I pray God will open your eyes soon so that you can see what God has in store for you. And you don't need to shack away from your responsibility. He's just waiting for one person to stand for him. Because he said, if you are ashamed of me in this world, I will be ashamed of you in my Father's kingdom. May that never be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. He said, but it's easy to go the way of the, the world goes. It's easy to flow down the stream. Go out there and sit down in the river with your boat. You get your oars and start pulling up against the current. You don't make it much time. And it goes hard. But you just once let loose the oars and watch how fast you pass the trees. Going down, but look where you are going. You see? When you are on the river, if you are going in a direction, maybe it's uphill, it's hard. 
But when you are floating down the hill, it can be a waterfall in front. Amen. So when a thing is floating easy, remember, you are going towards a great cataract down there of some sort. You are going towards the fall. It won't be long. You will be going over the falls. Just floating with the world. Easy. The way it goes. You don't want that? No, sir. But you must accept your responsibility. Now, you believe it. You think it's the truth. And the responsibility that God has given us in this day to bring this message. And as I get older, I know my days are shortening up. I feel the responsibility greater than I ever felt. Pressing on. We must do it. We must get down to it. In everywhere we go, tell the message. Amen. Tell the people Amen. that Jesus Christ is coming. Amen. That he is God. Yes. That is coming soon. Amen. There is not a hope left in the world but the coming of Christ. Amen. Amen. That's what we must do. Not just by our mouths, but by our life. By what we stand for. By how we allow God's manifestation to happen in our life. Sometimes God will say, go and pray. You say, ah, everybody's there. Or they want to have a dinner or something. And say, ah, I need to pray before I eat. You are ashamed to say that. Why? Don't be ashamed of Christ. Because if you stand for Christ here, He will stand for you over there. Amen. You remember Dwight Moody? He said he had a dream. And what was the dream about? He said he found himself in God's judgment seat. And then he was approaching a light. Then he saw that, okay, he got to the gate of heaven. And when he got there, he said, I am, oh, Daniel Kure. I am Evangelist Daniel Kure. And the angel searched and searched and searched. I cannot find his name. Ah. And the angel said, Would you like to appeal your case? He said, I would like to appeal. Because I'm a great evangelist. I work for Christ in the earth. And so he said, Okay, you can go in there. And so he said, He went and he was approaching a great light. And then everywhere was silent. And then he got to a place, he stopped. And a voice spoke. Have you approached my throne to appeal your case? He said, yes. He said, now, Daniel Curry, have you ever told a lie? He said, at that moment, all the lies that he thought were, doesn't matter, all the white lies, everything became big. Ah, he said, I have told a lie. Daniel Curry, have you ever stolen before? He said, Ah, a whole evangelist. He said, All the little, little trick, little, little dirty deals and things, he put everything became big. He said, I have stolen. He said, The next thing, the voice was about to pronounce judgment. He said, He had the sweetest voice in his life. Sweeter than the mother's voice. He said, Yes, Daniel Kuri, I've done everything. But when he was in the world, he stood for me. Therefore, here I will stand for him. May that be our portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us rise up. Let's not shack away from our responsibility so that Christ will not shack away from his responsibility to us. Amen on that day. Because then it may be too late. Talk to God. I don't want to shack away from my responsibility. I want to face it up once and for all. I want that. So I'm here. I'm a Christian. I'm a born again Christian. I'm a child of God. I'm a bride of Christ. I want to live so. Talk to him.
Talk to him now. We must face our responsibilities. Jesus, he was the second Adam. Unlike the first Adam, he faced the responsibility. He took the road to Nineveh. He went to the cross for you and for me. What are we going to do in return? There are many other people that we couldn't get to now because of time that face their responsibility. You cannot be an exception. You cannot run away from the presence of the Lord. It was only Cain that moved away from the presence of God. When Jesus Christ faced his responsibility, it cost him his life. Death of the cross, scourgings, mocking, crown of thorns and a whole lot. But what did he do? He faced that responsibility. John the Baptist, he faced it. Even though it cost him his head, he told the truth. And we saw many of them in the book of Hebrews chapter 11. Some of whom the world was not worthy because they faced their responsibility. Talk to God, Lord, I don't want to shack away from my responsibility. I do not want to run away from the presence of the Lord. I want to face the responsibility of marriage. I want to face the responsibility as a servant of God. I want to face it as a believer of Christ, as a bride of Christ. I want to face it. Talk to God. How many of us this afternoon are ready to face our responsibility? Let's signify with our right hand up to God that Lord, I'm no more running. I'm not running away from your presence. I'm ready to stand and face that responsibility. In as much as you, you face the responsibility of the cross for me and you told me everything is finished, I'm ready to stand. In Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus, Rock of Ages, your word has been spoken. It's been cut bits and pieces here and there. But Lord, your children have heard your word. And they are responding to your call. They are ready to stand by their responsibility. They are ready to take up the challenge, both spiritually and physically. Lord, we pray, may you uphold your hand. They have raised their hand up unto you as a in way to signify what they are ready to do. May you grant them the grace. Give them the ability. Because it is not him that runneth, nor him that willeth, but it is you that showeth mercy. May your mercy be upon all of us in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Mercy, oh God, to succeed in our responsibilities. Oh God, in our marriage to be successful. In our work to be successful. In our Christian work to be successful. As servant of God to be successful. As children in the home to be above board. Lord, may you give us that grace today in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray, Lord, your word is not only to speak, but there must be demonstration and there must be power. We pray that the miracle your children desire may be their portion in Jesus' name. As many as are sick here this afternoon, may they receive their healing in Jesus' name. Lord, may they have heard that they should marry because it's a good thing to do. And some of them have made up their mind to follow the step. Grant them the grace. Don't let them pick wrong person's bone. Give them the flesh of their flesh and the bone of their bone. Lord, we have people here, oh God, who are ready to work. May you give them work. A, a befitting work. A, a correct work that will help them to serve you better in the name of Jesus Christ.